Hey guys, David here and welcome to this video. Today we're going to take a look at the Alpha Visa U30, which is basically an Ender 3 with an added touchscreen and filament roundout sensor. So how does it compare? So first of all, I want to thank Gearbest for sending over this printer. You can check it out at the link below. But of course, this review is all my opinion and it will still be totally objective. Just like most other printers, this printer comes mostly assembled, but you do have to put some things together yourself. It's quite simple though, it shouldn't take more than an hour, kind of depends on your skill level, but it's really quite simple. There are colored instructions that are printed out that are relatively clear, and you can also probably find some other tutorials on YouTube about it. The construction, just like so many other printers, is aluminum extrusion pretty much all around, uh, which is used to roll on with these uh, Delrim rollers and it's also used for the construction pieces. To connect them all we have these what looks to be a powder coated aluminum. Um, for once not anodized but powder coated so um, it doesn't really make a difference. It just looks a bit different which is uh, I think it looks quite okay. What we don't have though is fully enclosed electronics. There is kind of a cover over it, uh, but you can still uh, get your hands in there and dirt can get in there. So it's not quite as nice as uh, some other printers that I looked at, which are nicely fully enclosed, uh, but I guess it's somewhat okay. The only thing that is not okay about the electronics at all is the placement of the SD card slot. It is all the way at the back. You really have to reach for it and it's micro SD, which is just like, no, why put the slot there? Terrible. The slot would have to be here next to the screen and ideally full-size SD, but I can get away with micro SD if it's just accessible and you can actually see where to plug in the printer without having to reach around. Uh, so what I re would recommend is getting this little extension from micro SD to full-size SD uh, where you can just use that, put that basically anywhere, you can uh, glue it to the back here or whatever you prefer. And this will save you so much hassle of reaching around your printer trying to find the SD card slot. What is really good though of the, from the electronics is this touchscreen. Now this touchscreen is nothing special, it's just a forced touch, so you have to, have, have to press down, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel the best, it's kind of plasticky but it is so, so, so much better than all the modeling based controls with the clicky wheel. Like, don't get me wrong, modeling is great and has a lot of customizability, but it takes me just one tap to get to the menu where I can adjust all the axes. I can move the bed around in all the directions. I can move the head around everything just by one click, whereas on, a Clicky wheel modeling based control, you have to click in, you select the axis, you select, select how far, then you can turn around, but then you have to go all the way back out to change to the other axis, which basically means that I never use any of the submenus there. It's just so much simpler on a nice touch screen and you can see a lot more on it as well. So from now on, I will bitch and complain about every printer that does not have a touch screen like that. It's just so much better. But getting to some things that affect the print quality a bit more, the heat to the bed here is quite nice as well. It has an aluminum base with a piece of glass on it where it has a kind of a fake build tag uh, glued onto it, which is basically the same surface that most other printers use as well. It is different though in that it has a glass in between, which does have some pros and cons. On the Pro, it is nice and flat, and that is really nice to see a perfectly flat. The aluminum bases usually aren't perfectly flat. Uh, on the count side of that though is that on the other printers you can remove the build plate just like this one, but because it doesn't have a glass plate attached to it, you can flex the build plate uh, if you have a print that is stuck to it really well that you can't get off with a spatula. On this you just have to hammer at it with a spatula since you of course can't bend the glass plate. The extruder is basically the same as on many other printers. Uh, it is reality compatible, it has a single tooth gear uh, here at the back, but thankfully also a filament runout sensor, which as I've mentioned in a other video already, it's just a simple switch, so it doesn't cost a lot of money at all, but it's just such a nice feature to have. 
The only kind of weird thing is the part cooling fan here, which in the stock configuration just blows out the nozzle and not the part. But for me that was quite an easy fix. I just bent it up slightly and that fixed it to where it now blows on the part. You could also just print a different hood for it, as that is just a printed part on this printer as well. The fans are also quite loud, uh, as are the motors, so this is not a quiet printer. Uh, you could probably do uh, the same modifications as I've done on other printers as well, uh, by replacing the fans with and by removing uh, the grill from them. That's probably gonna quieten it up a lot and you could also try to add dynamic drivers, uh, but those are all quite involved modification, so if you don't want to get into it, just don't put this on your bedside table and you're probably fine. The print quality then, which is basically the most important thing about a 3D printer anyways, uh, is really good. It is comparable with Ender 3 and all the other printers uh, in this price range, which is a good thing. The only kind of uh, thing that I could critique would be that there is quite a bit of stringing but that also is to a certain degree a configuration issue. But once again, I could not find any up-to-date uh, printer configuration that works with the newest versions of Cura. So I used the Endo 3 configuration for this since uh, it is so similar and it does work well. I might have to try to tune uh, the retraction settings a little bit to get some better stringing performance though. Apart from that, the extrusion is very nice and uniform though, all across the print and you can get some really good results that are basically perfect. So when it comes down to it, is this printer better than the Ender 3? And depending on how you look at it, I think yes. For me, just the touchscreen alone makes this better than any other printer in this price range that does not have a touchscreen. But it also has the added filament runout sensor and print results are comparable. The only advantage is that Ender 3 will be that it is more popular and therefore has more support. But I think this is a really good printer that is well worth the money. It is right around $180, $200 depending on what the sale is. So it is basically the exact same price as the Ender 3. And if you want to see a more in-depth comparison where I look at all the detailed uh, print differences between this printer, the JG Aurora Magic that I reviewed last week and the Ender 3, then stay tuned. I'm going to have a comparison video about these three printers, which are extremely similarly in specifications and price very soon, so that you can have even more data to make your decision which one to get. In the meantime, you can check out my social media link down below. Also make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Check out Gearbest at the link below. So thanks for watching and until next time.